Well, hello everyone, it's Sharon here coming to you again on, on Essential Stencils page for another DIY project. And I'm from the blog I Restore Stuff and I love to upcycle furniture and home decor. And today we're going to do a fun, exciting project. If you're watching the replay, make sure you comment the word replay after the live is finished and um, we will be able to give you another chance at winning a prize. So stay tuned to the end of this live and the prize winners today will be pinned to the top of the comments. I won't be reading those out because this is a pre-recorded live because I had something very important on on the time of my live. So here we are in um, with this fun project today and I thought of, um, I'll tell you what we're going to be doing. I'm using a cardboard box and I just wanted to create something fun that you could take say to the lake or to your cabin or even just at home on vacation with the kids. I know that some of you have got vacation time coming up um, and it's going to be a, a fun time of trying to find things for them to do. So here is one of my ideas and this is um, using the gorgeous Cabin Sweet Cabin set. It's a three pack set. Okay, and so let me show you what's in that today. So we've got the cabin, which I'm sure that some of you can even guess what I'll be using this for today and what we'll be doing. But this beautiful cabin, sweet cabin sign at the, on the other side. And then if I get time, I might even do this today as well. We've got welcome to our cabin. And that would make a great sign too for your cabin or for your home. If you want to call your, your home a cabin, you can do that too. All right, so we're using that. And then I wanted to probably try and introduce some of these. Now, the, the, I know for a fact that the cabin set and our wildlife set here that I'm using today, there's only about 20 something, 20 to 30 of these stencil sets left. So if you're wanting some of these and if you love what we're doing today, you might just want to do that. Um, grab a hold of these using my code, I restore stuff. Don't forget, use the code. I restore stuff and you can get 10% off anything in the essential stencil shop. Um, I'd love you to share our live today. And that is where you can find me at I restore stuff on all of the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram. I usually do my Instagram stories and show you what I'm working on over there. YouTube. I have lots of video tutorials on my YouTube channel. And of course my blog, I restore stuff.com Pinterest, TikTok, all the rest. So this is the wildlife stencil set. It has the following. Let, let's have a look at what we've got. Uh, is that a moose or an elk? Ah, I don't know. I'm in Australia, so you've got to excuse me if I if I get some of these wrong. We've got a little squirrel. I really want to use that one today. I think that's cute. Um, a lot of people think they're cute. Some people think they're pests. I know. So we've got the bear. We have, what have we got? An owl. May even be able to use that today. A wolf, a coyote. I don't know, what would you call it? And a buffalo or a bison. Guys, I need to learn my animals better, my wildlife. The other thing that I'd love to try and incorporate today is our gorgeous vintage birds stencil um, transfer set. I didn't see how many of these are left, but um, oh, actually there's lots. Yes, there's lots of these left in stock. I know that they um, ordered lots just so that we wouldn't run out and miss out. Okay, gorgeous bird cages there. There are three pages in this whole set. So this one's got an empty cage here. You could even put your own bird inside the cage, put a little branch in there, use these for signs and to mix them together with the stencil sets that um, Essential Stencil has so many of. And this one is just full of beautiful birds and butterflies. And I'm not even gonna start naming the birds and the flowers. Oh, are they cherry blossoms or apple blossoms? You can tell me in the comments. So because I'm pre-recording this live, I will at the time of the live be able to look back or afterwards anyway, look back and go through comments and answer questions. So any questions you've got, let me know. And also everything that I'm using today, I'll have a link for you in the description of the live here, um, showing you, telling you where you can get those. And Essential Stencil will also pin those comments as we're watching the live. So let's get on with my cardboard box idea. So as you may or may not know, we're building a house. We're getting ready to move into it sometime in the next month or so. Um, getting very exciting. So we're going for a building inspection this week. And uh, so I've got a moving box 
that I will probably be reusing and it's going to look beautifully stenciled. As you know, our, all our kids are grown up. So, um, but this is an idea for younger kids. You know, you could adapt it. You could create it with your older kids if you wanted to. Um, but I've, I've just taped the top together temporarily and we're going to create a little cabin. So you could use a box, say for example, you need a fun idea to take away on vacation with you, fill it with little toys, things to do, um, and you could create this stencil before or during your vacation time with them. Um, but it's just a play box, a fun thing to do. So as you can see, I've removed the tape on this side. I haven't on this side, but you may want to remove some of that tape. But when you do, it's going to look like this, a bit furry in sections. Um, but you can paint it like I did here. So I've painted this in kind of a neutral tone. It's almost a whitish tone. This one I've painted more sort of similar to the box. It's a brownish kind of a color. So you can do that. And we're going to place our cabin on the surface of the box. So let's get started with that because we're going to be doing some other fun things. So here's our cabin stencil. Don't forget use code I restore stuff and you can get the cabin set. So it's a set of three stencils so it fits perfectly on this size box and I know someone's going to ask me what size this box is well I can tell you now that the width is the same width as the stencils which are 12 by 12 I believe yes 12 by 12 inch stencil sets and so the my box is just slightly higher than that maybe by um, an inch or two so I'm going to bring the the stencil down to the base and we're just going to do a simple um, black stencil on there and then we're going to do some fun things with it. So I'd love to hear um, your ideas of what you might do with the stencil cabin. So another idea I had because there's four sides to the cabin, just let me think about what brush. Now our brushes, I'll get to that in a minute, what I was going to tell you about the four sides. Um, the brushes that Essential Stencil have, uh, they come in th four different sizes. So I'm going to use their 7 8 inch brush that you can also use my code I restore stuff and get 10% off all your brushes as well. I could tape this down on the sides. I might just do that with some painters tape. Painters tape is good for not sticking. It won't um, it won't tear up your cardboard. So that's a good thing. And it shouldn't tear up your paint either. But I just tap it down lightly, just ever so lightly. All right, now I've got my cardboard laid down here. This is my cardboard that I'm going to offload my paint onto. I dip my brush into the lid of the paint. Well, I've shaken up the paint so it's all kind of mixed in together. It does have quite a bit on there. So I'm going to offload that, being careful not to flick it everywhere. But I want to offload as much as I can onto the side there. And work that sort of into the bristles. Let me just make sure that you're in the shot there. And I'm just offloading that a bit and working it into the bristles before I go ahead. And let me just point this down a little bit so you can see a little bit closer. And because these are such large areas, I'm going to be able to use a little bit more on my brush, but I just still wanted to offload a bit to just make sure I'm not using too much on the brush that it's going to bleed underneath the stencil because we don't want the bleeding underneath. It creates fuzzy edges. So I'm just going to grab a, a, a bit more of that paint there. And I'm working long ways, just kind of pouncing a little bit, but dragging at the same time for this one. And really depending on the stencil, these little round circles, I feel like I can, the logs, let's call them, the log ends. I feel like I can do my swirling method with that. Sometimes I swirl, sometimes I, I brush um, along a little bit. Now um, this, what I'm doing now to this cardboard box is a great way to practice your stenciling because it really doesn't matter. It's just a cardboard box. In fact, you can just recycle old cereal boxes, turn them inside out and you've often got a great area that you can practice your stenciling on. And um, what I was going to say before, when you are painting your box, because there's four different sides, they could each represent a different season. And you could do a, a different little cabin for spring, summer, autumn and winter. So then you could paint them in different backgrounds. I don't know, what color would you paint it for 
fall, for example. You could do browns and autumn tones for the back background of the cabin. Um, for winter, you might do white to represent snow, snowy cabin. Imagine a nice little fire coming out the chimney of the cabin. You could do that. So many different options. Summer, what would you do for summer? What kind of background? Maybe yellow or like the sunshine or just a bright blue sunshiny day. You could even use the blue idea for spring. So I like our cabin door here. So the other idea that you could do is um, using this little cabin idea is actually when you're finished, so then you wouldn't stencil this area, you could cut out with a Stanley knife just that section and open that cardboard area as a flap for an actual door that the kids could then play with their toys and little, I don't know, you know you can get those plastic farm animal sets and things like that. Uh, or barn animals or wild animals. All sorts of fun ideas that they could use this as creative playtime on vacation. Because every now and then you will have a vacation where it rains <laughs> and you just have to be indoors. So for those of you who don't know, I, we, Marty and I have four children, all grown up now. And um, in those younger years, I was always looking for activities like this where if they're older, they could even learn how to stencil like this for themselves. Or when they're younger, you could just pre-do this for them and they could decorate the sides or do the, the background painting or help you with it in some way. And like I said before, you could create it before you go away or take little paint the bit of paint to do it while you're away or just for a rainy day project at home you don't have to be on vacation to do this one so any of the cabin stencil sets like I said before there's only about 20 to 30 of them left in stock so grab a hold of those using my code I restore stuff to get you 10% Okay, so there's our cabin. Let's just remove the tape here. How fun does that look? So can you imagine just uh, taking that, I'll do another one, I may do another one on the side soon. Um, there you go. So imagine cutting this door out here, creating a little flap where, this is the door handle, so you could just open that flap. You'd use a nice sharp Stanley knife to cut that. Make sure it's all, all um, able to be seen. You could even cut the tape out the window there you could use it as a peephole to peep and create something inside so you could you know open up the box and cut these flaps off um, and you know create something on the inside at the back a picture in the back there so here's some other fun ideas as well as the cabin we can add some animals to it so here's where our wildlife comes in if you've just joined we are creating a fun um, a fun box that can be an activity for the kids to do. So we've got, look, I think that the deer set is uh, already sold out, but there's also this set, that's a three pack. This one's a six pack of wildlife, which I showed just before. So I might use some of those and look, we can create another cabin on the side, or we can create a fun animal scene to go beside the cabin. Imagine what you can see out in the out in the woods or whatever. So then, like I said before, you've got four different sides to decorate this box for your kids to have some fun playtime. Even a squirrel. Now, I know that these are probably not to scale. <laughs> That's okay. But imagine a little squirrel sitting down the side here. He's a, he's a giant squirrel. He'd be a giant squirrel. Um, or, or sitting an owl on the roof. I just put the squirrel on the roof. Where is the owl? I think he's here somewhere. It would be a giant owl, but you know. So we could maybe create a scene on the side here of some of these animals. And then we might, um, so for example, where's our squirrel? I like the cute squirrels. So the other thing you can put is, I know that essential stencil, I'm sure they have a tree, <coughs> a 
tree stencil somewhere. Now we could use a brown to create the squirrel. I forgot to get my brown paint out, so we'll just go with the black that we've got here. But just imagine, and when we've got these large spaces, so some of these stencils, unlike the words, which are tiny small spaces, so you'd use a small brush. So I'm using the larger 7 8 inch brush, getting all the majority of the paint off in the center of the stencil. You can see that there. And then bringing it in from the sides here. We've got our cute little squirrel. How cool was that? <coughs> we have a squirrel. I'm thinking of putting the owl up here, but let's have a look at our transfers and grab a branch from one of the transfers. There's three different pages of transfers. Really good value, so much in there. Gorgeous bird cage. In fact, a bird cage would look amazing on the side of your cabin <laughs> stencil if you wanted to use a bird cage for that. So the transfers are pretty easy to use. I've never used it on cardboard before, so let's go see how we, we do with that. <coughs> I'll grab these two branches and oh, here's a little um, what did we decide that was? Apple blossom or cherry blossom? Oh, we've got butterflies too. Let's just cut those out as well. Okay, grabbing one branch. I'm going to use the owl stencil, but he wants a branch to sit on. So let's go with that first. And there's some butterflies. They could, I could actually just leave those butterfly there. We've got a branch coming here. And you know what, you could even do a branch on this side where the cabin is. So you could have a branch just kind of coming in over the cabin, you know, something like that. So, <clears throat> but here's our animal side. So let's see how this works out. Uh, just popping the lid back on my paint here, guys. Adding, putting my black brush inside a wet cloth so that if I want to use that in a minute for another stencil, I can do so. Okay, here's the little tool that comes with your uh, transfers. And as we always say, you don't have to use the tool. You can use a credit card or something, or even your thumbnails. Sometimes I use that. So we just peel off the paper backing, the white paper backing, put that aside. And there's your sticky side that goes down. And let's see how that goes. Oh, I've got to leave room for my owl. I didn't think about that, did I? So imagine our owl. He's going to sit about here, so he'll want his branch around about there. So, oop, should have probably put that, no, oh, it's too late now, it's down. Should have probably put it off to the side a little bit further. So let's see how that works on painted. So this is painted surface, this cardboard. Like I was saying before, you could just leave the surface. It doesn't have to be painted. Um, <coughs> Got our butterflies at the end here just flying away. You can cut those out individually with transfers. You can cut them all up. Bring them out a bit closer for the view. You can see how that turns out. I just lift the ends off. Is it coming off? Oh, yep, I see it. <laughs> Oh, it's actually coming off quite easily. And if you see any little pieces that are stuck to the clear, the clear plastic that you're lifting up, then just lay it back down. And in that same spot, it'll come off. Here it comes off quite easily on this cardboard. Oh, it's coming off nicely. And after we've taken it all off, we just kind of smooth that down with our fingers. And you know, I know some people might think, oh, what a waste putting those beautiful transfers on a cardboard box. Well, you can put it on a, get a wooden crate or something like that and use that as your, um, your thing that you can take toys, you know, you can put toys in for the kids and create still a cabin. It could be a wood box and then you can keep it forever. It doesn't have to be a cardboard box. There we go. Look at that. A nice little branch right there. And we can add our owl on the top. And I'm creating this owl in, oh, I think I might put it this way. It kind of feels like he needs to be going inwards. 
and we've got him, he's going to be sitting right on top of the branch there. Um, and you could do that a different colour if you're an artist. Unlike me, you may want to uh, create some kind of image on there that's, an, that's more realistic to the owl. You know, this is really just the stencil outline. So again, I'm just going to offload my black paint onto the cardboard. And we're stenciling the owl just on top. Oh, we've got all that space to fill in the center. I forgot about that. I didn't have to rub off nearly as much. And when we finish this, I will, I think I'll have time to do a cabin sign, which I really like that cabin set, the set of three. It's really gorgeous. I'm sure some of you can see that now, that it's um, a cute one to add to your sign collection. Or if you're sign makers, you know, you probably have customers that would like that. There we go. Gorgeous silhouette of an owl there. So of course you can rub, um, clean those off as soon as you've done them but isn't that cute so there we have the cabin and then we've got you know you could decorate all the different sides with all the different animals that you can find in the wildlife set there's also I'm pretty sure we have trees now the other idea is that uh, there are some you know Christmas or oh, we could do this one as well a little transfer down the bottom let's do that while I'm here um, there's Christmas trees on certain sets I know that this one of the mini sets has uh, Christmas trees on it and you could add the Christmas trees to I think I'm just going to add this in here to this branch for your winter side remember I spoke before talked before about uh, doing you know you could do summer you could do some an autumn side so each side could be a different cabin with a different season it would be fun so I think that the wintry one would look cute with some Christmas trees on the side of it too which you do have a little bit of space here on each side of the cabin to fit that but I hope you like this fun idea of uh, just giving the kids something fun to do they could even sit here and rub on these transfers with you and show them how to do it and most older kids will be able to do that quite easily so we're just rubbing that on removing the transfer backing easy as that now you don't really have to seal it although you could if you wanted to but just imagine all the possibilities of decorating your cardboard box to create a nice fun play activity again cut out the door let make a little flap you could even create whole scenes inside and light it up or something to make those those um, birds in the background butterflies in there you could make a little peephole through here you can shine a light in and see the inside of your box so many fun box ideas using stencils that you can create with your kids. All right, so that's our first idea. Our second idea is again using the cabin, sweet cabin set. And I like the look of this one in the middle of the set right here. Let me get it out. It's welcome to our cabin. Okay, so it's a three, three piece set. Use my code I restore stuff and you can get 10% off. Your order now I'm going to do this one so I've stained the board it's just a well let's see it's almost 12 by maybe 11 or 10 10 by 12 so this the stencil is actually shorter than the full you know this whole width here is 12 by 12 but again the stencil uh, is really only a smaller part of that so I've stained this board ready to use it's just a oh, what do you call this that <laughs> it's just that kind of a board I'll remember it later um, so I'm going to actually show you that shadowing technique because I know a lot of you like like that and so I'm going to use the black for the word cabin at the bottom and then we're going to shift it and create the rest in like a white so using white over dark I know that uh, usually I'll probably do it the other way so that um, you know the the black can tend to stand out a little bit. So I'm going to shift this slightly. Mm. Let's see. I think I'll leave it right there. Okay, so the, the trees here are a little bit close to the word cabin. I could just tape them off a little bit. Uh, using, I've got some tape already here. 
just so that I don't accidentally get the the brush, the paint on those words. And then I just start doing a nice um, swirly motion on my large letters. Once again, these are all the stencils I'm using today seem to lend to this large brush because they are quite large. This one I probably could have taped right here, but I'll just be really careful. The word cabin. If you've just joined us, don't forget to join in the conversation. Let us know if you are new to stenciling today. I'd love to know that. If someone shared this link with you, we'd love you to let us know this is your first time watching a essential stencil live or video and um, if you're brand new to stenciling have never tried it before we do have some prizes at the end we will be picking three lucky winners um, yeah but we'd love to welcome you to watching our lives each of us ambassadors we do a different weekday showing you stenciling tips using essential stencils. Okay, so there's our cabin word. So I'm gonna just let that dry. And I'm using fusion mineral paint. So the fusion mineral paint is a furniture type paint. This is the color coal black. <clears throat> I will put all of the, um, the products that I'm using. I'll make a little supply list. We've got that in the description of the live up there. So you can just check on what those are. And I do have an affiliate link for fusion mineral paint. If you'd like to use that, but you can use any you know, acrylic type based paint. So for the next part, I will have to have the word cabin. We'll have to have that cleaned off because I literally only just thought of that because I'm going to be creating a shadow effect and I'm using a white color. So we are going to just wipe that. If you get it really right away, just be, this is a good demo on how to clean your stencils. Just being careful of the bridges and those areas that might fling, um, you know, flick up a little bit. But if you do uh, wipe your paint off immediately, it will come off really well. So fusion mineral paint is just like the name suggests, fusion. It is, it is created specifically as a furniture paint to be able to stick to any and all surfaces. So I do find that it's probably one of the best which means that it's more difficult to get off your stencils usually if I leave it too long and if I leave it dry it's going to stick to the stencils really well okay so always get the back so we're flipping it over and wiping it off the back and it always sort of comes through and gets under those edges so we'll do that as best we can and then I've got a cloth I can just quickly wipe over that and then it's good to go for the next little stint. All right, so to create a shadowing effect, I'm going to use white over black and black is going to be the shadow. So because it's a dark color, I'm expecting that the white could take a couple of coats to be able to go over that quite effectively. So here is our, so it'll kind of look like snowy Christmas trees, won't it, if I'm doing white for this. You can use any colors you like though. But when you're doing shadowing, it's good to use two contrasting colors. So I'm going to use white and uh, this is Victorian lace, which is another fusion mineral paint color. It's just a slightly off-white color. And I am Australian retailer for these paints. So if you are in Australia, you can get these from my shop, I Restore Stuff. But if in the USA, let me know and I've got a link that you can, if you don't have a local retailer of them, you can just get them shipped straight to your door, Fusion Mineral Paint. All right, our essential stencil, stencil of the month club is another thing that I was gonna mention and Amanda would have showed you this week. She was helping collaborate. So just before we go on, I'm just gonna have a little quick plug for the stencil of the month. The coastal fits with the Christmas in July theme because you know how much Amanda loves coastal. So this one's designed by Amanda. Amanda Dillon, <coughs> uh, one of our ambassadors, and she collaborated with Essential Stencil to come up with this gorgeous design, Christmas in July, for the July Stencil of the Month Club. And you will want to get the gorgeous coastal deck the palms um, and cute little sayings and shells and things because they all coordinate and fit with 
the Christmas theme, the Christmas in July theme. So you can use my code, I restore stuff, and get 50% off your first month in the Stencil of the Month Club. So it's really great. You get shipped three stencil designs. So there's three pages in here of the stencil design, three different designs, lots and lots of words and sayings and keys and trees and Christmassy things. So much fun that you can put all in the one all in different stencils you can coordinate them all together so that is the stencil of the month club use my code i restore stuff and you can get your first month 50 percent off all right so to do our shadowing technique i'm going to show you we are going to shift our stencil so we put it exactly where it was that's where the black stencil went on then to shift it slightly up slightly up and slightly across to create our shadow okay so you can see a little gap right there you can see the gap where the black letters are so the black will be left and the white will paint over the top now if you you could just do black on those certain areas but I just usually cover the black all over because you just never know you know where how that's gonna how that's gonna go and how where it's gonna fit in <coughs> where it's where you're gonna miss bits so Getting our Victorian lace, this is the fusion mineral paint color. Uh, I'm going to start with the, the word cabin. I'm first going to offload here. See all that paint that came off the brush. I'm going to use that later, so never fear. Okay, we want to offload it fairly well, and then we're going over the top of the word cabin. And then because there's black underneath there, we may be able to still see that through the white. So this is what I mean when I say usually I'll do white as the under shadow and then the darker or black on the top just because the black covers the white easier than the white covers the black. But I just wanted to show you this way so that you know how that works and I'll show you what it looks like before we do a second coat and then you'll figure out why you probably need a couple of coats <laughs> of the white Okay, so just doing nice soft swirling motion. We don't want too much, too much on our brush. So it's very easily, you could very easily make the mistake of thinking, oh, I need much more on my brush to cover that black, you know. But that's the mistake that we make and get a lot of bleeding and fuzzy edges underneath. So we do want to just keep it still to a minimum on the brush not much at all and then we will it's a lot better to do you know a second coat rather than okay i'm just going to go, go, keep going now with the rest of our stencil and of course we've got these gorgeous trees the trees have got some nice thick bits in the middle and so hopefully i didn't have too much on my brush just then. Sometimes I'm rushing and I go, oh no, I've got too much on the brush. You could do, you didn't have to just do the word cabin. You could create shadow over the entire stencil if you wanted to, but I like to sometimes just do it on one word and just make that stand out um, and just create other colors for the rest. And you could also uh, do different colors in this cabin. Oh, I like that effect actually. It's almost like a whitewashy cabin. I think I might leave it like that and see what that looks like. Just have a peek, shall I? I'll show you what happened. I just kind of brushed that lightly. Can you see how light that is? And you can't see really until I lift it up. So let's have a look. Oh, and see the word cabin, how it's... Oh, I think I like that. See how the cabin's a little bit more subtle than the trees because I just brushed it really lightly on. And the word cabin, we've got that great shadow thing happening, but you can see the black letters underneath, can't you? So I will be doing a second coat on that. Let's go and continue on with our letters on the top. <coughs> and you can apply this shadowing technique for any of your stencils, <coughs> including images. It doesn't have to be for words. Wow, we lasted all the way to there on our brush. It does go a long way. And when I, I find, when I'm doing this swirling method, when I get to a certain point and I see that it's 
not very well covered. Let me just go over it a few more times. A few more swirls and it gets right in there. And the reason why I'm not getting fuzzy edges and having the paint all bleed under is because I've hardly got any on the brush. It's what we call a dry brush method, okay? So let me just show you that. So we've got the nice sharp lettering at the top. We could actually go on make them a little bit sharper. Don't forget we've also, and I didn't bring them out today, we've got our bridge stencil, um, bridge stencil brushes, stencil bridge brushes. How do, how do you say that? And they can fill in any of the little bridge gaps if you wanted to. Whoops, we've just kind of went off, off center. So I'm gonna find exactly where it was because we want that to be covering exactly the same spot. This is where you should probably tape it down, but because my stencil extends outside the edges of my board, it's a bit harder to tape it down. Okay, let's go over that one more time. And I'll show you what happens when you add a second coat. You could even add a third if you wanted to, but we'll do the letters C and A and you'll be able to see such a stark difference in how sharp, how much sharper it looks when you've got the second bit of coverage. Okay, so I'll just hold that up for you. And so you can see that there already, but when you take it off, you'll see the brightness of the C and the A compared to the B, I, N. So we're just doing a second coat now. And once we've finished this, don't forget, don't go anywhere. We have prizes to give away at the end of our live today. And if there's any questions, let me know. And um, sorry, I can't look at comments while I'm doing this today, but I will be answering them after the live goes live. And there we go. It's a nice solid white coverage. Don't you really don't need a lot of paint for stenciling at all. Now the Fusion Mineral Paint, it also comes in these little tester sizes. So if you just want lots of little tiny bits of color, you can always use their tester sizes. I'm gonna just go over one more time on maybe the trees, add a bit more to the branches on the outside. It's like snow covered cabin here. And also, again, for these letters up the top. Last little bit. And this is called the uh, Cabin Sweet Cabin stencil set. It comes with the, the big words, Cabin Sweet Cabin. Also comes with this gorgeous design with the cabin in the middle. And I'll show you what we created earlier. Just doing another light brush on that cabin. There we go. Let's see. So just adding a lid on there. And I'll show you what we did earlier. If you missed the beginning of our live, there we go. Okay, so we've got the gorgeous shadow effect on the word cabin with the black as the shadow. And then I've created, see the cabin's kind of just got a dry brush look on it and it still stands out like a cabin. Welcome to our cabin. And that's just on a stained board. It's a water-based stain that I create, that I used just with some milk paint, I think it was at the time. I've got lots of videos on that. If you need any more, I've got tutorials on my YouTube channel. So let's see, this is what we created today. You can always share this live. We would love you to do that. Don't forget to comment, we have some prize winners coming up and they will be pinned to the top of our video here today. I won't be reading them out because this is a pre-recorded live and I will be here next week with another DIY live for you. So we've created, we used some transfers to do this and all we've done is create a fun play box for the kids for vacation time. You can decorate the, all four sides for four different seasons. You could even open up the door and create that nice sharp line with a Stanley knife, fold it back, have a little peephole in here and then create designs on the other side of the box on the inside. So I painted the background. You wouldn't, you don't necessarily have to, you can just use the plain box, um, but so many fun ideas you can use there with the cabin design. It's a great one. So thank you guys. Whoops. 
so much for watching today. And um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you went away inspired. Go away inspired and join me anywhere on anywhere on any social platform at iRestoreStuff is where you'll find me. And don't forget to use my code iRestoreStuff for essential stencil and uh, you'll get your 10% off or 50% off your first month for the Stencil of the Month Club. Lovely being with you today. I'll catch you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.